So we have made a lot of videos on this channel using a Raspberry Pi. Everything from a sub counter to a Steam Link, even an ethernet bridge that improves the internet connection on your Nintendo Switch. However, I'm really excited about today's video because unlike a sub counter, almost everyone can make use of a NAS in their lives, even if they're not that tech savvy. So today we're going to build a super awesome Raspberry Pi NAS that can securely store your photos, movies, etc. in one place without breaking the bank. Alright, so let's start off with what you'll need to make this NAS. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, but it has to be at least the Raspberry Pi 2B. Obviously, it is recommended that you get the latest Raspberry Pi available, so right now that would be the Pi 4. But in this case, I would actually recommend it. Between the Pi 3 and the Pi 4, there are a lot of I.O. improvements in the latter version, such as USB 3 upgrade from USB 2 and Gigabit Ethernet upgraded from 100 Megabit Ethernet. So in reality, the max transfer speed of a Pi 3 NAS would be 12 megabytes per second since it does not have Gigabit Ethernet. No matter if you have Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 4, don't worry, the install process is the same for all of them. We are going to use a Pi 3 today because I don't really have the money to buy a new Raspberry Pi just for this video, but I wanted to explain the difference between the Pi 3 and Pi 4 for the people who are really serious about making the fastest NAS they can. All of these models use a micro SD card, so you'll have to get one that is at least 8GB, which shouldn't be a problem because these things have really come down in price. Perhaps it's due to the popularity of the Nintendo Switch, but you can pick up a 64GB Samsung micro SD card for about 10 bucks, which is a wicked good deal. Also, make sure you have a good power supply and you don't just use any random AC adapter you have laying around your house. A random adapter may not give enough power to the Pi and can cause it to underperform or even shut off randomly. Since this is a NAS, Network Attached Storage, we need some storage to attach. So we'll need some sort of external drive to plug in. So if you have an external hard drive or SSD already, then that's perfect. Or if you're repurposing a drive from an old PC like I am, then you'll also need a SATA to USB adapter. You'll have to be conscious of what sort of drive you want to use because depending on the type, you'll have to invest in a powered USB hub or a powered SATA to USB adapter. This is due to the fact that the Raspberry Pi already does not draw a ton of power, and if you plug in power-hungry accessories, it can really make it suffer. In particular, hard drives take more power to run than SSDs because there is a spinning motor that rotates the magnetic platters on the inside, so buying an external power adapter does not require the Pi to power the device. Finally, you'll also need the basics like a keyboard for setup and an ethernet cable since it gives you better network performance aside from the fact that I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi anyways. The software that we're actually going to use to make this NAS is called Open Media Vault, and installing Open Media Vault is more simple than ever before. I once made a Raspberry Pi NAS with a Pi 1, and you had to install a special Open Media Vault image file to flash to the SD card, and it was just a little more complex. Now, all you need to do is install Open Media Vault through the terminal in Raspbian. So obviously we need to install Raspbian, but since there is no need for us to take up precious resources by running a full desktop GUI, we will download the light version of Raspbian, which is command line only. Before we do that, I like to format my SD cards using the SD Card Association's SD Card Formatter tool just to wipe any old data off the card. Next, download the Raspberry Pi Imager tool from the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves. This program is really nice because it makes it really simple to install a variety of operating systems for your Raspberry Pi, where you previously would have to download an ISO file and flash it yourself. As I said earlier, we are going to install Raspbian Lite because we don't need the desktop environment. Once we boot up the Raspberry Pi, you'll see a line right at the end of the boot sequence that says my IP is blank. Make sure to write that down because it'll come in handy very soon. First thing we're going to do is make sure everything is updated on the Raspberry Pi by running sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Then the next thing you'll probably want to do is enable SSH which allows you to have a remote terminal on your normal computer. It's just kind of easier to set everything up this way. So we'll want to type sudo raspy config and go down to the interfacing options and enable SSH. If you're on a Windows computer, then you can use PuTTY to connect, and if you're on a Mac or Linux computer, then you can just use the terminal to connect to the Pi remotely. This mainly comes in handy so you don't have to type this long strand of text to install Open Media Vault, which I failed at because I didn't know how to type the vertical line thing on a UK keyboard setup, so I just copy and pasted it on my Mac. 
For me, the install process took about 24 minutes, so be patient on this step, especially if you have an older, slower Pi or slow internet connection. Once the install is complete, the Raspberry Pi will restart automatically. When it's back online, go to a web browser and type in the same IP you used to connect to the Pi via SSH. If everything went to plan, then you should be greeted with the Open Media Vault login page. The default user credentials is as follows. Username is admin and password is Open Media Vault, which I would definitely recommend you change by the way. This can be done instantly by going to the admin settings and resetting the password of your choice. It might seem like there's a lot going on here, but we don't need to access most of these menus. First, plug in the external drive you want to use. Then we are going to navigate to the disks page on the side menu, refresh the list to find our external drive. Then we are going to wipe it just to remove any data that might have been lingering on the drive before we format it. Then we are going to go to the file systems page and click on the create button to make a new file system. Select the device that we just formatted and give the drive a label. Now for the actual file system, I would usually recommend ext4 since this is a pretty popular file system to use on any Linux based operating system such as Raspbian, but I tried two separate times to format my SSD into ext4 and it got hung at different points in the format. Usually you do not want to unplug a drive as it's formatting because it can seriously mess up the device, but I was sitting waiting for a while and it was obvious nothing was happening. Instead, I chose XFS and that seems to format fine, so what I would recommend to you is start with ext4, give it a long time to format, and if that does not work, then try XFS. Next, we will want to navigate to the users page to create an account to access our folder shares from. There are a lot of text box elements here, but all I filled out was name and password for a basic user and it worked fine. Now we are actually going to create a network shared folder that multiple computers can see on the network. On the shared folders page, give your shared folder a name, choose which file system it should use, then hit save. Once the file system is created, highlight it and edit the permissions. You can see the user that we created earlier and you can give it read and write permissions to both create and read data off the drive. Finally, all we have to do is go to the SMB page under services and enable SMB. Once that is done, click on the shares tab and add the shared folder we made earlier. Apply the changes and I personally like to reboot the Pi so after doing all this it gets a nice fresh boot with all of our new settings. And just like that we have a basic NAS setup on our network. I know that sounded like a lot but besides waiting for my drives to format that whole process probably took me less than 10 minutes without looking at any tutorials or anything. I think it is really simple and intuitive for new users who might have never made a NAS before. When I was first writing this video, I thought for sure the only bottleneck I would have in my setup would be the 100 megabit ethernet jack on the Raspberry Pi 3. Well, I got my hands on a working USB to gigabit ethernet adapter, and even though it was limited to USB 2 speeds, it should have increased my transfer speed, but it did only barely. I would say we only saw a two times improvement on the read speed, whereas the write speed only improved maybe one or two megabytes per second. If we take a look at the network configuration of the USB Ethernet adapter and the onboard Ethernet jack, we can see that the link speed of the onboard adapter is only 100 megabits per second and the USB adapter is 1000 megabytes per second, otherwise known as gigabit. And if we do a Ethernet speed test with both interfaces, we can see that the USB adapter gives us a faster transfer speed, so obviously it is working. The problem I did not foresee is that how the Pi 3 and all prior Pis are designed, the Ethernet jack and all the USB share one USB 2 connection to the processor. So it is to my understanding that the Ethernet connection and all the USB ports are splitting one 480 megabit connection between all the devices. So if we use a USB to gigabit adapter, the 480 megabit bus is being split into two between the Ethernet adapter and the drive. So that explains why we do not see speeds over 30 megabytes per second. Although even when I did a DD speed test, the drive speed did not increase. So at this time, I am not sure if the USB hub limits the speed of devices, even if we are not fully maxing out the ethernet port. All this headache can be avoided on the Raspberry Pi 4 because it uses a PCIe lane to the processor, which gives much higher bandwidth than a single USB 2 stream. If you have a Pi 3, I would honestly not recommend buying a USB to Ethernet adapter. Instead, I would just buy a Pi 4 because for a little bit more money, you can get a huge performance gain. All right, so at its core, this NAS is kind of like a local Google Drive. You can send files between two computers, which is especially useful if you have a Mac and PC, which read different local file systems. 
Using this NAS to send documents, videos, and photos between two computers on the network is even better than Google Drive because then you don't have to wait for Google to zip all of your files, which can take forever. Also, if you have a privacy concern of what Google is doing with your files in their cloud, this NAS gives you control of your own files again. I found this pretty nifty app called Photosync, which works like Google Photos. Then instead of uploading your photos to Google servers, you upload it to your own. So in this example, I want to keep my Linus meme safe. So I'm choosing to back up those selected images, but you can also choose to back up your whole image library if you want. Then it will transfer those photos to your NAS for safekeeping. We can navigate through the folder structure it sets up on another computer and boom, there are my fresh dank memes. The free version does have some limitations such as no auto transfer and degraded photo quality, but for a one-time $5 fee, you can upload full quality images or you can pay $1 a month to get full quality images and auto photo transfer. Better yet, if you choose to prepay the whole year, it only costs $6.49. I want to clarify that I am no way sponsored by this company, I just think it's a really good product for a really fair price. I do want to clarify though that Google Photos is a better backup solution because physically the photos are stored far away from you. So in the event of a robbery or a fire, your Google Photos will always be there. You can set up this sort of data redundancy in Photosync, setting up two SMB servers, one being a pie at your house and the other one being a pie at your friend's house or something. But that requires a lot more effort, which a lot of people don't want to do. That's just the beginning of what you can do with this device. You can set up a Plex media server or a Steam game cache server for faster game downloads. Hopefully this little device opens you up to the wonderful world of NASes and in the future you buy something like a Synology NAS or better yet, build your own. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see any other Raspberry Pi projects, leave a comment down below. If you want to watch more, check out the other types of Raspberry Pi videos we have made, or just check out the channel for all sorts of tech content. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys in our next video.